it is a thing that actually pushes me so much forward. Initially, I was practicing for like from five to six hours per day. Behind all of that, there's growth. I just live my life daily with a sort of mindset that I felt like an artist. I planned to be like a champion like in the future, but I didn't expect it like to get this like that early. What is going on, beautiful people? My name is Josh Moxie, and in today's episode of the podcast, we are going to be interviewing none other than Azel. And Azel is an incredible beatboxer. His actual name is Giuseppe Cuna, double P. Pay attention to that. We talk about that a little bit later. But today, today's episode is going to be featuring someone who is one of a kind. He is not only an incredible soul, and we will get more into that in a part two, which by the way, subscribe to that because we we could not fit all the topics we wanted to talk about in today's episode. So we're going to be doing probably multiple rounds. Like I could see him becoming like a staple on this podcast. So subscribe if you want to see more from him and myself, as well as all the other things I post on this channel regarding long form positivity, self growth based content. I'm not going to give him a huge intro here because he did that already for himself when he kind of just like went, went off. I forgot to tell him ahead of time that I was going to do the intro. It was so wholesome that he decided to do his own, own intro. But uh, yeah, you, you'll see what I mean in a moment. But this man is an incredible, incredible skill. He is the Italian beatbox champion and a bunch of other things. And we unpack that more as the episode goes on. But in today's episode, I'm gonna be deep diving with one of my best friends on all types of things regarding his beatbox journey, how music relates to him, his biggest inspirations, how he takes inspiration from different areas of life and applies it to himself, what he was like as a, ch as a kid, the passion that outlines his entire life, the belief, the self-belief he has in himself, all types of stuff like this. And if you like this kind of stuff, we're gonna go even deeper in the second episode on the psychology, but uh, we have a lot of laughs in this, a lot of good conversation, and I hope you enjoy this episode. And if you are enjoying it while you're watching or listening, I would hope that you press that like button to support the channel and let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. If you also like audio a little bit more, there's a Spotify, iTunes, etc. wherever you find your podcast, I, and there as well. So check the description for that. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy this episode. Much love, you beautiful people. All right, so let's let's just jump into it. Boys and can girls, I, can I just thank introduce you. myself? You can absolutely do that. Okay. So like maybe before that I introduce myself, I just want to thank you for the opportunity because like um it is something truly like meaningful to me um as well as we are like very good friends. Um I just like love to support this thing, which is like, wow, it's so sick. Um, Dude, but yeah, thank like, you so I, much for being here and, and coming on. It yeah. means so fucking much to you. I'm so fucking excited. We've, this has been something we have had in the works since March, I think. So yes. I, I'm, I'm so excited wow. to finally do it. And thank you for your patience as I got this all set yes. up. So, yeah. <laughs> so please, up. please continue. <laughs> so yeah, I'm actually like Giuseppe Cuna and my artist name is Azel. I am a 20 years old guy. Um, I just, uh, my main hobby is making uh, music with my mouth, which is mainly called Human Bee Books. Um, I do love um, electronic music, uh, more specifically a subgenre of dubstep, which is rhythm. Um, I do love so much even jump pop which is a subgenre of drum and bass um trap electronic trap music without lyrics specifically um <laughs> yeah so like um as well as lo-fi so much um and yeah pretty much those genres also uh, hip-hop instrumental most of the time i love it um but yeah like um i'm just you know a guy that like have a very a truly private labyrinth of his life that maybe outside is not that more recon like it, you can hardly recognize uh that i am like a coder or am i you know a photographer or just you know 
those little stuff of my li private labyrinth of life, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, there so, is, that's, I think that's a very important way to start. You are so mm -hmm. much more than what we see as oh. Azel online. You're so much more. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for that. <laughs> Well, that's and that's yeah. like by the way like photography i did not know about that you like, yeah um how long have I, yeah i st uh, like i started photography <laughs> when i was like 10 or 11 years old by my uh one of my favorite uncle uh which is gino um like <laughs> such an italian name by the way <laughs> <laughs> super <laughs> gino <laughs> um Actually, his surname is Liguori, so it's Gino Liguori. Um, he has like that big camera, and I was so fascinated about it. I was like, "What is that? Is that a toy or some like uh, something to, to have fun with or whatever?" And I was like, "No," <laughs> I was so pissed off. Like, no, I just make photos with it. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, "Photos, wow." <laughs> You know, I was just used to like see Google image pictures back in 2010. They were like, like terrible pictures, like 30, like 320 uh, X um, uh, proportion, like with uh, 280, like they, they were like so small in proportion yeah. and whatever. They were so pixel, like so many pixels and like, wow. And seeing that high high quality cameras in front of me, I was like, oh, "What? That is so fucking sick!" So yeah, I was like, "Hey, can I try it?" Oh, are you kidding? No, of course not. This is a professional thing. Blah blah blah. But he introduced me um, such a good thing, you know. It introduced me into photography like a year later with another camera. Uh, a, a a little bit more smaller but you know um it was like real really fun to like spend time with my uncle and making photographies and then like i just it just become a hobby of mine pr privately you know mm. so do you still shoot to this day actually like it is rare to be honest but um, whenever it happens i just you know import the photographies on my computer because i don't want that other people um sees them because maybe they could be like um bad or whatever i just those are just personal to me you know mm -hmm. so i just want to have them like private so yeah mm -hmm. i get why. that 100 percent. especially mm -hmm. when you're such a, a public figure it's nice to have that private area of yourself yeah i yeah <laughs> yeah of course yeah. So go, I think this is also just leading us into a ton of other things like this. You, you touched on the way you approach that. I feel like that might just be a theme of your life because you have this, this very like passionate side of you. When you were a kid, were you always this passionate? Let's go way back, way, way, way back to like <clears throat> day one. What was like little child Azel like? And more so well, actually, Giuseppe. And that's how you say your name, right? Okay? Is that yeah. the actual way of saying your name? Yeah, my, the actual way to, to pronounce my name is Giuseppe, with a double P at the end, like Giuseppe, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, this is like the purest form of, you know, pronouncing in the most <laughs> Italian way, Giuseppe, you know? With the hand motion and all. With the hand movement, you know, like Giuseppe. I think it's if if there's an American person listening to this and you're struggling like I did, like it was not easy to learn. I literally learned last yeah. week how to properly say it. Yeah. But I do remember. I do remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what I what the breakthrough was to actually make me say it properly was I was saying Juse, but I was missing yeah. the sep because it's Giuseppe. Eh. Yeah. Giuseppe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's a yeah. there's a p on each side of the what is the word? Uh, so funny. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying. So yeah, um, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So going going into small Azel and small yeah. Giuseppe, what what mm -hmm. was he like? So I was kind of like a bored kid playing in some retro games on a SNES emulator, which is a Super Nintendo. Um, because I didn't, I never had like a, an actual Super Nintendo to play. 
So I was just there, eight years old guy in front of a computer playing some Super Nintendo games with an emulator. Um, you know, most of the time I wasn't that, you know, um, at my grandma's house, by the way. <laughs> but in most Italy, of the right? time, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what um, city were you in, by the way, at that time? Um, uh, what did you say? I'm sorry. What city were you in at that time? Uh, at Crotone in the south of Italy, my born city. Okay. Um, so, which is in Calabria, so in the south of Italy. So, like, basically, whenever, like, it happened that I wasn't that, uh, you know, um, into that mood of playing games, I was just browsing the internet. I was surfing the internet, you know? Um, and I knew that back then YouTube was just, you know, popping on like, it was like a big, um, YouTube, um, you know, um, explosion. Like every, everybody were, was talking about like YouTube, like, holy shit, you know, there are so many videos on YouTube. Oh, YouTube. Oh, that's sick. Okay. Let's search some videos on YouTube and blah, blah, blah. And I was alone in that room <laughs> and I was like, Hmm, let's, you know, let's just search for a random video or whatever. And I don't know how I encountered that video of Rachzel, which is one of the, uh, like legends of the human being books, you know, he's from America. And actually, um, it was like the very, very, very first big boxer that I've ever saw and heard in my entire life. And more specifically, I was like, that was so something, it was something so much, you know, that was impactful to see a guy that was like singing and making drums, actual drums and snares and whatever. Simultaneously, I was like, oh, oh, oh. I was like, oh, holy shit. I, I, I still remember those days. I was like, how the fuck are you capable of doing that? Like, oh, <laughs> that, that was so like, that was mind blowing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, even though like I was a kid and I was like easily, you know, um influencing like i i don't know i always you know i could be surprised that even if i don't know of of random stuff but that one specifically like it, i don't know it touched my a, a specific part of my brain i was like so inspired since that moment to just you know uh getting myself into it and starting something that I've never experienced before. And I, I was like, I was feeling that movement in my body, you know, and in my brain and in my mouth, I was like, Oh my God, I want to start this. I want, I want to do this too. Because like literally nobody of my age was capable of doing that. Like nobody, neither a single soul. So I was like, oh, let's do this. Let's do this. I was so like fascinated about it. And I was so, you know, motivated of doing that. What inspired um, you when you heard that, when you watched that? What was it that made you think immediately, I want to do this. I want to jump right into this. It was still that specific part. It was like the fifth minute long or the sixth minute when he started to sing and making people simultaneously, mm -hmm. you know? And I you, was you right saw there. that and you were like, you, I, I want to do my this for third myself. Time, my third time that I, that I actually saw this uh, right after the second time, I was like, oh, no, 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 wait a second. I need to do that. I need to do that. I feel it. Oh, my God. This, mm -hmm. this is scratching that part of my brain that requires this shit to do to get it done or, you know? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I started to, like, making random noises with my mouth back then. Um, I was just randomly making strawberries with my lips, like... <laughs> or just you know random crap um but yeah like the more the time was going the more i was capable of um you know having a concrete ideas of how my drum kits um in my mouth uh, like the the actual design of my uh drum kits needed to be 
uh, needed to sound like uh, with, in, in my mouth, you know? So I was like, hmm, I think that the kick drum needs to sound like this. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, there was like uh, a, you know, a constant uh, making myself fascinated about making drums and stuff. But it was just about drums, you know? It was just about drumming. It was just about practicing and practicing like day day by day. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much about like the initial state of my, uh, you know, the lethal laser experience, you know? Mm-hmm. And at that yeah. age, you ended up doing a couple of years of casual practicing and building those initial stages, right? Oh, uh, do you? Ah, uh, okay. No, no, of course. Like, um, right after that, uh, like I stopped watching the same video cause I needed to get inspired by other stuff, <laughs> of course. Um, but yeah, like at least once a week I was still watching that video, you know? So mm. I was like, okay, um, maybe I need to get back to that video too. Like, you know, getting inspired from actual human bee books and whatever, um, and blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, uh, like by the time I was, you know, thinking about, um, other than making just drums, like making melodies, making basses, making weird ass noises and blah, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, Right after that video, I started seeing like Joseph Pulpo, which is like a friend's beatboxer. It, it is actually an ex beatboxer because now is more involved into and seeing, but is like one of the milestones of the human beatbox, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so it was like this, um, you know, pretty, um, pretty chubby guy, you know, making the those noises like pretty, like you know, pretty basic. Uh, patterns you know but I was still fascinated about them because like there was like some melody into it not just singing just melody and drum kits together and I was like oh I want to do that I want to do that and I started making like Billie Jean of Michael Jackson I started making some specific like little parts of covers and whatever by my own always because I was so shy when I was really young um, <laughs> did, you, did you put these out or were you too, too still shy? Mm, uh, um, no, actually, I, I never recorded like a, uh, a specific cover of um, Billie Jean or like, you know, uh, uh, maybe I should do some. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, but like, that was, yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, that, that could be so fucking interesting. But Back in the days, like I was very shy, and I just I just kept recording myself by my own and repeating that and listening to myself, you know, like oh, this sounds. Shit. I need to level up my game. I need. Did to you say this. that to yourself? Yeah, so much because and I. How do you? I was gonna say how how do you balance the uh, the critical honesty with yourself versus uh, because some people compar- can, yeah. Yeah. Some people could hear that and be crippled, but you don't feel that. Why is that? Mm, because I was constantly comparing myself with pre-existent uh, human bee books videos on the web, on, online, you know? So I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not that good, <laughs> you know? <Ugh>. Oh, <laughs> nah, dude. <laughs> and then so as, just, you, as yeah. you saw that, though, what, what did you say? What was the mental thought process to because a lot of people would be like oh i'm not good enough and if they say that enough they like might want to quit but you decided to keep going and get better instead where is i i kept practicing and practicing and practicing because i could like i could feel um improvements like even small improvements you know even tiny improvements but i could like I could 100% feel, feel them, you know? And I was like, yeah, I need to push even more, you know? I need to, yeah, I, I, I believe in that, you know? Like, uh, it was so fascinating. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. That's really cool. So almost mm-hmm. like your, your wins were these little, like, 
upgrades in your in your skill set? Yeah, like um, they weren't like that big to be honest, like in a short amount of time. But I recognized by myself that in one year, once it happened, like from fourteen years old to fifteen years old, I made like a very, very, very big change in my game. You know, on human B books. So there was like a very big improvement um, because I introduced like bases, like human voice bases. Um, I'm just talking about the outward ones. Um, and like I introduced some more snares, some more drum kits by their um, own kind. Um, yeah, I remember. I remember that year was like so next level to me. Also because like um, I um, I knew a very like uh, a next level artist that play also chess, and it was the one that made a collab with Nokia Bell Labs um, to make an approach with the human B books and AI technology. I'm talking about Harry F, aka Reaps one which was the first one that introduced me into dubstep beat books. Mm. Because like before him, I discovered Skrillex. No, actually before Skrillex, I discovered Noisia, um, which, you know, they introduced me into dubstep, like proper dubstep. Um, mm. Then I discovered Skrillex. And by the time that was, you know, uh, going, uh, I, I just, you know, discovered Reap's one. I discovered... Um, Tim's Leaser, I discovered some dubstep beatboxers that were like so much into it, you know, like so much. Um, yeah, I was like constantly fascinated about them. Like, oh, wow, I, I want to do those growls. I want to do those, uh, I want to do those like um, throat spaces. I want to do those vibration bases. I want to do those stuff. Like, oh, it feels good. But and at that period of my life, I wasn't really, you know, aware of the fact that like I was relying more music because I were I was just relying on human beat books, you know. I wasn't thinking about music itself when I was beat boxing. I was just thinking about beat books, you know. And by the time I discovered that was like not an issue, neither a mistake by you know by accident but it was just because like i was feeling that way because i was just used to it you know just keep pursuing that that line of making just human b books and not thinking about music so mm -hmm. once i discovered that i was like no <laughs> i need to have even a little approach with music because i think that a human b boxer is an artist that not replicate not rep replicate music but it try to just emulate with his mouth as best as he can music you know music itself mm -hmm. because human beatbox is actually music um but you know um there are in some specific cases uh people or just artists that like don't give a, a single flying fuck about music just they think about human b books you know mm -hmm. um which is which could sound weird which could sound weird but i can guarantee you that those people exist and i was one of them back in the days so hmm. you know <laughs> interesting yeah. um what year are we in by the way right now in this timeline when i discovered that thing yeah like when you discovered noisia and then when you when you were um, not viewing yourself necessarily as like an artist or a musician, but you were viewing yourself as purely a beatboxer. Yeah. So I discovered Noisia back in 2010. Um, I discovered um, a few, <laughs> wow, a few specific tracks that like, <laughs> wow, that made my mind blown away. What were um, those? Yeah, um, like um, uh, uh, one was a DNB tune. Uh, ah, fuck, I don't remember the name of one. Uh, it's okay. We if if you don't remember them right now, we can throw them in the description after. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but I remember the patterns of them and blah blah. blah. But I remember there was like an eight beat track. 
um, of Noisia was one of because like I just heard I just kept listening to Noisia just for a few amount of time. It was just like maybe half year or even less because when Skrillex kicked in, I was just listening to him, just him, you know. Mm. Um, oh no 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 no! The very first track of Noisia was Danger. You shaking hands with Danger? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember it. It was so <laughs> sick. It was so sick. Ah oh, man, that was so sick. <laughs> You're shaking hands with Danger. Oh man. Ah, oh, the feelings. I, I am having like goosebumps. Oh, man, those times were so precious. Holy, wow. I, I love that, those times. Um, but yeah. That's awesome. Uh, right and after- this is, how, this is like two years into your, your beatboxing journey? Or uh, what, what, like, cause at what year, I think it was, did you say 2008 when you started to beatboxing? I started or? beatboxing in 2009. 2009? But like, I wasn't like, that much into it you know okay. i was just trying i was just making random crap noises you know um when dubstep actually kicked in <laughs> i was like oh, it was like a completely different hemisphere you know um so i wasn't actually thinking about b books when i was listening to dubstep to be honest <clears throat> so um you know Basically, Skrillex kicked in right after Noisia with Scary Monsters and Ice Brights. Shout out. Um, shout out. Yeah, 100%. Um, <laughs> and then, like, my name is Skrillex, Skrillex VIP, which is, like, his tune. Holy um, fuck. Robot. I forgot about that song. Like, not the VIP, but my, my name, name is, is Skrillex. Skrillex. Bye. Name. Yeah. Oh but my god, bro. Yes. You're fucking bringing And the me original back and the original one, uh I'm not talking about the VAP. The original one was like good, but the VAP was so much next level. I was like, oh wow. You, you love your VIPs. You love them. Yeah, I love VIPs generally because of, <laughs> of it of their concept, you know. Bringing like an actual idea to next level, it's so sick, you mm. know. I love VIPs. That's why I also I love Eliminate because it was the very first guy that made like a double VIP in, in like the whole EDM scene. Oh, right. <laughs> and I'm talking about Snake Snake Bite. Jesus. Absolutely. <laughs> Already a legendary oh, song God. that so like I don't even remember what the original sounds like, but the Snake Bite VIP. So is the original just an the original the original it was like uh dun 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 it was like a very uh you know standard typical trap pattern the vip was like kind of similar but with more revolutionary not, not, like mm, diverse stems if, if you will um and the third one like the vip of the vip was with the stems of the actual vip but with the fake drop and that double drop wow man it <laughs> <laughs> he changed my perspective of listening to music. That was so fucking sick. Wow, I love Eliminate. I love Nathan Merrill, bro. It's so good. Yeah, he wow. is definitely one of a kind, Nate. Definitely one of a kind. Yeah, I love him. All right, so going um, back going back to your journey real quick with, with beatboxing. Yeah. So, so my at- name is Krillix. And uh, yeah, then um, there was... There were like a few. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I was keep keep listening to just those tracks, um, another couple of of them, but I don't remember the name actually. Um, but right after that, like after a year, I noticed that there were like a Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites remix EP, uh, by Dirty Phonics, by Zed, by Bear Noise, by you know, even Noisia. Um, and like so many other people involved. Um, and I was like, wow, they sound so different. I love that. I love Bear Noise. I love every single one of them, you know, because dubstep was something truly new for me, you know, something so new. 
um, and I was being addicted, you know, I was like, oh, I need to listen to that like in the morning after I, I have lunch, after school, uh, after I do my homework, before I go to sleep, after I woke up, like, ah, <laughs> it was so insane, you know? Um, and yeah, like right after that, um, I started, you know, discovering more beatboxers, as I already mentioned before. Then I discovered Reap Swan, and yeah, so um, that's pretty much it about like music knowledge, you know. Like at the beginning, as a little lazy, um, mm -hmm. I remember like a few specific times that I was like so much into drama bass too, but um, it was like a short amount of time. It was like half year, I'd say like a whole year maybe. Yeah, mm. Mm. and somewhere around this this timeline you decided to go from just casually beatboxing more or less for it's it seems like it was done for fun right and then you decided to really take it seriously what was that so moment for what, you and when yeah so um i decided to like mm, taking human beatbox more uh in a concrete way because i wanted to just you know I could see the potential in, in it. Um, so I decided to just go back in times and remember when I, where do I start it? And I started it with rough still. So I decided to just uh, have a artist figure of mine because I was so inspired by my passed away grandfather also, which was a poly instrumentist, a lyrical a singer, a tenor, you know? He didn't like human beatbox, to be honest, but you know, those are just details. Um, he, inspired, he inspired me so much because he has his own artist figure. And I, and I was like, dude, you know what? I want to have an artist figure too. <laughs> so like, um, I went back in times and I was like, okay, so I, I started with Raftel. So why not just taking inspiration by it and just, you know, finding a, I don't know, a name out of nowhere, like something. And so I, I get inspired by that name. So my name is actually Azel, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so I started, I started it like when I was 15, when I was 14 years old. Um, and since that, that year, um, I started taking human beatbox more seriously. Like, more seriously so much more mm. um and i do remember that like as i already mentioned before reaps one and other few dubstep beatboxers influenced me so much like so fucking much because like i was i, I was with that mindset like constantly like okay i just want to have like a signature style of mine because that's my artist figure I want to have like, because I am a very schematic person, you know, like if I do decide to take like a, an opportunity or a, uh, just, you know, uh, a way of thinking, or, uh, I decide to just, you know, create something new. I just need to be schematic on, on how this thing is going to evolve and whatever, you know? So like, I was like, okay, mm, I love dubstep. So let's make dubstep. <laughs> so let's make dubstep beat books. I was like, okay. <clears throat> so I was struggling with my uh, vocal shorts so much for like a couple of weeks. I was feeling so bad because I never tried like best lines with um, my vocal shorts. It was so tough for me, honestly. Um, but yeah, like science then, like, um, I actually, yeah, I started to take people seriously, more seriously. And um, like at 15 years old, I was like, okay, but <laughs> if I'm taking this artist figure more seriously, if I am just creating all of that, I created my own logo, my own Facebook page, Facebook, by the way, Facebook page and whatever, <laughs> my social media platforms and stuff. Um, P.S. I hate Facebook. Um, you know, <laughs> I needed to say that. I needed. I needed. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> you can see it like bottling up within you and then just you just let it free. It's so absolute. I I hate it. I hate it. Uh, it's more an agency, not a social media. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it looks like an agency. Jesus Christ. Okay, but you know, <laughs> oh, I need to take a mint. I'm sorry. Don't worry. Uh, don't worry. Okay, so you said you're at 15, and by the way, for context for anyone listening. You were born in 2000, right? So any anytime you're saying like 14, no, 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 99, 99. Sorry, uh, so 99. Yeah. So just take away. Wait, oh, now I'm feeling. What is it? So, but you're 20 right now, right? When's your birthday? 10th of December. Okay. Okay. All right. So yeah. we are in 2014 right now, right? We are in 2020. No, no, no. I mean, like in the storyline. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. It's okay, yeah. it's okay. So in the storyline, yeah, I, it's uh, 20, 2014, yeah. Um, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, like I was asking to myself, if I'm taking this so like in a serious way, if I'm creating the Facebook page, if I'm creating like this and that, like, should I like, create signature sound my signature style my signature this my signature that i was like oh i i need to like i need to make isel isel unique you know but i was like struggling with myself like oh my god i need to i need to find a way i need to you know ah i wanna you know i wanna just push you more further this i wanna do stuff um so yeah like uh, this happened like <laughs> casually. I was just having some random beatbox jams on TeamSpeak. I don't know if you know about TeamSpeak or even Ventrilo. Do you know about uh, Ventrilo? No, no. I don't know that part, but I've heard of TeamSpeak. <clears throat> mm, okay, but like, do you know about Ventrilo? Like, do you know Ventrilo, the application? I don't. It's like an obsolete version of TeamSpeak, to be honest. Okay. Uh, nobody actually uses it like anymore. But well, back, back in time, it was like so used. There were like plenty of servers like making uh, for human beatboxers just for hidden ones, you know, or just for the, uh, for the legendary ones that didn't need it, like uh, views or whatever on YouTube. They just needed to, to stay there and making beatbox gems or whatever. Okay. Um, shout out to Hypos from the UK, by the way, my guy. Uh, I was jamming with him. And um, like a few other beatboxers, and from actually from nowhere, he just um, made a click roll sound, which is like a sort of oscillation with a with your tongue, play, uh, like putting it on the top of your mouth and like making a, a, an actual oscillation. You know. Mm -hmm. And can you, by the way, as you're explaining these, can you make the demonstration as well? Yeah, of course. He was making like a click roll in that way, like. Um, You know, <clears throat> does it sound clear? It did at first, and then the audio just kind of cut out. But you try again. Ah, okay. Does it okay. sound good? Yeah, you're getting the first part, um, but then the audio just goes a little bit weird. But it's fine. So the click roll sound is basically this one. Uh, I was just jamming with him, and I was like, "Oh, could you repeat that?" It was like, yeah, of course, why not? And it was just making some patterns with it, like <laughs> and stuff. And I was like, hmm, this actually is pretty sick. Like, oh, that 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 shit is crazy. <laughs> because like from him, I started like um, discovering inward bass. The inward bass is like an actual bass that comes from your throat. And like, um, it's by the inhale action of, you know, inhaling, breathe and making a sort of bass, you know, and you, you actually feel it from your lungs. That is like actual bass. It, it, it's something that I cannot explain through words, but I, I don't know if you understand this. That's interesting though. So it's, it's actually like really, you're feeling the bass inside of you as you're doing this. Yeah. You feel the bass inside of your, of your lungs. And it, is, like your chest, actually. That's really, mm -hmm. really fucking fascinating. Um, 
And I, so, I was like, okay, um, I think I need to make a new sound. I was there because like there was like that part of my brain that was scratching so much, you know? I was like, oh, I need to do something with this sound. It's so sick. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then I was listening to Panda Eyes Colorblind. By the way, shout out to Panda Eyes. Um, such a sick music producer. Um, like, I was just, you know, listening to Colorblind so much. And there was like a specific part of it, which was like in the exact middle of the song, like before the drop, uh, the, before the actual second drop, it was the pre drop of the second drop. And uh, it's like a sort of, you know, I don't know if uh, I, I could not explain you that, you know, that well, but it was like a crescendo of the pre drop of the second drop. Um, it was going so much higher. Um, and that was reaching, you know, the actual initial state of the second drop. And it, in that part, I was feeling like, Oh, the basses. Oh, I love those basses. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I was influenced by them. You know, I was like, okay, I need to have a sound that is like clearly near to this stuff. You know, and I was like, okay, let's try this. And then I created my liquid bass. The liquid bass sound is actually this one. Um, which is, which still is a signature sound of mine. Um, right after that, with the same oscillation of my tongue, I created the vortex whistle, which is like basically a liquid bass without the inward bass. It's just the oscillation and the mouth position. And the vortex whistle is actually this one. And then I created like plenty of other sounds. And I do remember that at 16 years old, um, I was like the very, very first Italian guy, like in the whole country, making a shout out video for Swiss Big Books, which is like the very first agency relied on human Big Books uh, based on St. Gallen in Switzerland um, that, like, you know, uh, promotes content of human Big Books all around the world and stuff. And me as a 16 year old guy, um, you know, I, I actually felt that, you know, feeling of getting myself involved into the scene and remotely because at 16 years old, I wasn't that capable of moving myself around the con other countries and stuff. I was like, okay, I need to plan to just, you know, uh, making my image feel more known on the web, but how? Then I thought about Swiss Beat books. I thought about other YouTube channels. I thought about like so many other ways of getting myself more well known for you know the other people. Um, and then Andreas Fraufel, aka Pepuni, uh, which is the founder of Swiss Beat books, came up to me like, "Dude, you gotta be doing a video for Swiss Beat books if you want to be more well known or stuff like that." And I was like, "Okay, let's do it." I called a, a very good friend of mine, which is Alessandro Medri. Alessandro, what an Italian name, by the way. Uh, and then, <laughs> uh, like, uh, I called him and I was like, dude, um, is it a problem if I just come to your house and, like, record a video uh, on your studio? Because, uh, like, there's a guy that asked me to do it. And I was like, no, no, okay, for sure. Like, my home is your home, like, whatever. He's a very good friend of mine, you know? Uh, I recorded it, and when it was uploaded, like people went like, oh, "Liquid bass!" Oh, like I saw so many people like going crazy for that new sound, and also the Vortex Crystal. Um, and I was, so it was immediately like, a hit. Yeah, I was like, "Wow!" And like in one week, it hits. It hit to like a um, hundred. Uh, yeah, 115,000 views on YouTube in, in, a, in a week, yeah. And then the numbers uh, went until it got like to a million views. Um, and yeah, like wow. I recorded- And how like, old were you at years. this point? I'm 20 years old guy. Oh, sorry, no, at this specific point uh, throughout when you posted this thing on, uh, on Swiss Beat Plus. Swiss Beat so how much time it required to reach like a million views? That's sure, let's do that. When did it hit a million? 
Ah, uh, yeah. It hit a million uh, in, uh, I'd say a year, but even I think earlier. Yeah, mm. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. And when, it, when, it, when is it posted? What year? Uh, in 2016. All right, so the second, the second yeah. of August, second of August of 2016. That's yeah. gangster. That is gangster. <laughs> All right, oh. so going going back to the journey. So you've got at this point, you've got your two custom sounds now that are very much a part of who Azel is as a as yeah. a yeah. And beatboxer, and that also came from you actively looking out and trying to figure out. How can I separate myself from the rest of the crowd? Beyond 2016, what what were, what was what is the, the the next four or five years look like for you? Because th- there was there's so much that transpired between then as well. So like science star year, I was like, okay, uh, now I made that video. I got well known. I knew so many other crazy artists all around the globe. Um, I was just you know. Uh, I, I was going still at school. I was like, you know, I was sitting still in this room. Um, I was, you know, I was just keep uh, overloading my mind full of thoughts because I was like, okay, um, I want to be the champion. I want to be the best on it, you know? Uh, I planned to be like uh, a champion like in the future, but. I didn't expect it like to get this like that early, you know, like after just a couple of years, I became like the Italian B-Box champion. Um, and what, and what felt, did that like, feel like? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, bro, it feels <laughs> like, oh, it feels so weird. It feels good, you know, but it feels weird because like after that, you don't know what to do. Like uh, <laughs> you just stand up like this and just, uh, what what am I gonna do now? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's awesome. And and what year did this? Yeah. So by the way, did you? I I have no context of the backstories so with uh, the Italian Italian Championship. How did that go? What was the what was the backstory on that? What year was this going down in? And like, yeah, yeah. So like, before. um, before the national B box championships, uh, they were organized like regional B box championships. Uh, on like two a couple specific regions which were Emilia Romagna and Tuscany, um, uh, which I do live in in Emilia Romagna and Tuscany is very near, and I won like every year. <laughs> like, That's awesome. I know you, it's weird. As so as soon as you started, you just like started winning immediately every time. Yeah, every time. Like from two thousand and seventeen until last year. Yeah, before COVID, yeah, killing it. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, every regional champs, um, and uh, actually the third edition, like the two thousand and nine, the two thousand and nineteenth, I wanted to be a judge, but people went nuts because like they were like they pushed me on the stage, like no, we want to see you up on the stage, and I'm like. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I I just want to like you know I want to leave some space to other people you know <laughs> like for people like I I am not just I'm not that kind of guy that wants to like um uh, you know have the, everything by his own or like I, I want to have you know I want to reach everywhere like I want to just. If if I know that I can share something with somebody else, I do it. Like, it's a it's an instinct of mine, you know. Mm. And if I if I knew back then that instead of going up to the stage, I could have shared like my stage instead of me with another guy with like less experience with me and maybe you know stuff like that. Uh, I I could have you know just shared my place with him, you know, instead of me. I could have easily replaced myself with that guy. But like literally everybody pushed me up on the stage. Like, no, we want to see you perform, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, it was like kind of a weird feeling. Um, 
Yeah, actually, a national champs uh, was like the completely opposite feeling because like people were like, "Oh, are you sure to that you want to compete? Am I right? Yeah, I'm fucking sure. <laughs> I want to compete, bro." <laughs> they were like, oh, "Okay, I was just you know just making sure." And I'm like, "No, no, no, it's a hundred percent legit that I'm going up on that stage and I'm gonna do performing my own skills." And they were like, "Okay, it's fine. Um, yeah, no mind, <laughs> you know." <laughs> when what year did you perform at national uh it was like back then in 2018 2018 and how did and that go also, that... and then uh well you go uh yeah and uh, i won that edition and i won also the last year one so like both both ones <laughs> that's awesome yeah. that's awesome yeah and mm. okay so oh my god there's so much to unpack here um mm. let's talk about your times when you've when you've gone through hardship throughout that actually that let's pause hold that thought about around going through challenge for a second but let's go all the way back to uh to just to wrap this up at this point you said that it was you were almost like it felt weird it almost felt surreal when you won and kept winning um but you're also at seven years of putting in work at this point back in 2017 right yeah so how many you said on your Instagram story a while back that you put in around five to six hours a day of practicing on people. Yes. That was like a, like a very big period of my life that I kept just practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing, bro. Like constantly nonstop, you know, absolutely. The whole obsessed, yeah. yeah. Absolute obsession. And I was like, no, uh, look, uh, I'm not having any more like a social life, which is bad. I'm not having any more like my private spaces. I'm just beatboxing the whole day. This is not going to be healthy for my mental state or just for, uh, it, it is not going to be a benefit at all. You know, <laughs> I was like, I, I could just got to slow down a little bit. Um, but yeah, like initially I was practicing for like from five to six hours per day. And how many years did you keep that up? No, no, no. It was like short amount of time, like less than a year. Like I'd say eight or nine months. But then I just downgrade. I just downgrade, you know, a little bit my uh, pattern of, you know, practicing from five to six hours. I was like three from three to four hours, you know, and I just keep doing that constantly, like from three to four hours. And this is the, what you stick to now, the three to four hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Okay. And do, okay, so throughout that five, five to six period, what, what year was that, by the way? You know that I don't actually remember. Uh, maybe I'd say 2014. Maybe I could be wrong. No, no. I'm, and that I was the year you made the, probably those huge, you said you had a year specifically around 2014 where you made incredible gains. Was it that specific year? Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, that was hundred percent that year. So yeah. Mm. Yeah. 2014. Yeah. Full in. Yeah. Okay. All I in, like it. All in. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, through, uh, when you, when you go back to more present time and you're trying to, to balance more, it's not just, uh, so you're beatboxing less, from a daily perspective output, but you're also doing so much more at the same time, right? Um, like right now? Yeah, for example, like you've got, yeah, exactly, the face said everything right there. <laughs> you've, what yeah. else do you have going on right now? Because there's that time. Right. Okay. Um, so right now I'm, I'm leveling up my game, which is like having an approach with actual music. Um, I made a collaboration with Nails. I made um, some work in progress with other producers as well, as well as Yax, Infect, um, like so many other producers. Um, and I feel so excited because like I'm just working with them. And I also like was so curious about how do uh, producers collab how a human beatboxer and a producer collab, um, like whatever, you know? I'm just having this brand new approach with electronic music and actual music producers that I've never had before. And I'm constantly like bringing this to the next level, like day by day. 
because I want to just be in constant of what I'm actually working on, you know? Yeah. I, re- I'm, I made my own human being book sample pack. Uh, I made um, like more content, you know, related with P books and music simultaneously, as well as that clip with nails, of course. I made also five, uh, five up to seven work in progresses with nails, by the way. Like, wow. Damn. Um, yeah, I, we, we, we felt so much like near as artists, you know? Mm-hmm. So like, um, yeah, right now uh, there's a lot going on to be honest, but like, if I need to be honest, I'm just giving priority to remote work online, which is like working on um, database systems, DBMS, um, coding, uh, and stuff and also like photography like rarely but mostly human b-books school is not a problem anymore because i just you know finished school um and i saw it that, by the way. thank you and i saw it like uh, as a problem because it was like just keeping myself away from my hobbies and my passions you know mm-hmm. uh, but i knew that you know there was like part of the life process so i needed to, to do it mm-hmm. But that's that's what is going on like currently in my life. Mm. And mm. just okay, so there's oh my god, there's literally a million things we can talk about. We're definitely going to have to do a part two at some point because I'm looking at my outline. I'm just like, there are so many other things I want to talk to you about. So, so we're gonna we're gonna jump all over. Let's do it. But, Let's do it. But uh, as for the passions, man, like this is just a theme throughout your entire life. As I'm as I'm listening to this story, it seems like you identify something externally and you're like, okay, what, and it typically use, is creative in nature. Would you agree with that? There's a lot mm. of like creative pursuits that find a way into your life. So you'll, uh, what I'm seeing is you look and you see something, you're like, wow, that is cool. And I think you're subconsciously saying, I could do this. Do you say mm. that to yourself? Because mm. I, I, there's definitely people who view that same type of thing and think mm. I can't do this. Because that's like mm. their their negative thinking type of thing and, and lack of mm. belief in themselves. Um, do you have a, tr- a ton of self belief? I would define it actually a sort of life trigger. You know, it's an automized life trigger of mine. Because like in first place, I'm not a negative person. I'm a hundred percent like full of energy, positivity, and blah blah blah. <laughs> because you you know me as well, but you know absolutely. Um, yeah. You're very. So much I've that. got this. Yeah. And I've got like this automat- automatized like trigger, which allows me to have like different perspective of, you know, specific objects or specific life situations or specific music, like sound frequencies or whatever, and creating something even new out of nowhere from them, which like involves also randomness, which is like a very big factor of being an artist and so on you know can you explain that the randomness part randomness um like on the majority of cases as an artist as a music producer as whatever it helps you so much on creating and innovating also um because like most of the time i am a you know me i'm a very rigid and schematic person if i do make a to-do list or a a program based on code lines and they need to be executed uh like cascade in a cascade way like um, by the way can you explain that for average joe who has no idea what you're talking about with the technical side of things it's like schematic yeah. and and cascading yeah so like being schematic i i just you know reasonably think every uh situation of my life uh, truly pre- precise, precisely. I mean, if something happens, it happens for a reason. Everything needs to be on a specific order or whatever, you know. Um, but as a uh, code lines, uh, code lines, I mean, like the actual back end of a program or uh, an application that could be on his, on smartphones or iPhones or, you know, computers mostly uh, is a software, you know, more well known as a software. Um, I'm referring to that part where you see like um, numbers, uh, letters, um, you know, and uh, 
uh, executed in a cascade way it means like by an order as i already mentioned before so um picking up the con the topic of being random and having that randomness around you most of the time it helps because as a human being we are not perfect and most of the time we we think and we actually pretend to execute um you know life schedules in a very smart and precise way or just even executing like little works uh in a very brilliant and perfect way you know but sometimes we cannot accept the fact that we fail you know and when we fail we need to accept that it happens or for a specific reason or for no reason at all and we just need to embrace that feeling and just converting into something positive you know that's why i think randomness is so positive because i think that it brings up some that variable that can change your life into a better uh in a better way you know so absolutely um, yeah it, it can inspire people making new shit making new music making new uh beatbox patterns making new sculptures as an artist artist you know because mm -hmm. nothing like almost everything happens for a reason but that's the thing almost not everything yeah hmm interesting man Okay, as for mm. uh, work, oh my god, man! Again, there's just so many different things I could unpack <laughs> here. Um, hmm. How does we talk about schematic? We talk about all types of things like that. You live your life very purposefully and, and very designed on purpose. How does how do you approach this in the day to day with that type of mindset and embracing the fact that random shit happens? I just um, live my life daily with a sort of mindset that tells me like, you know, um, you need to be like the more realistic as you can. And by saying that, I think like, even though I need to pretend like I need, yeah, this is a needing of mine. Um, even though I do like really pretend to have everything scheduled like perfectly and everything like needs to be executed in the most clever way or whatever, I accept the fact that like there are the majority, unfortunately, the majority of the times that I fail. But that's the thing. Like, here's the thing, you know, like <laughs> um, uh, behind all of that, there's growth my opinion behind every mistake every fail fail experience um behind you know uh, that chest pain that constantly makes you feel uncomfortable if you need to you know go forward with the next step but you feel uncomfortable doing it you know that chest pain makes you growing even though it's a uh, it's a background process of being a human being, you know, but this is how life works, in my opinion. If you're worried, that's positive. If you're feeling anxious, that's positive. You know, like um, I grew I grew up um, also as a social media manager for Swiss Beatbox and other uh, teams and Swiss Beatbox uh, as Beatbox Television, Beatbox International, and many others, and. I think that I learned about personal life that I could have this approach with personal life too was like, mm, you know, the more you are like realist with the agency, the more you are like um, confident with other people around you, the more you are, you know, like the more you, you accept the failure and you have a, like a, um a super fast fix to it uh or you need a day to just think about it just you know you, you need to just think smarter in my opinion you need to just you know don't hurt yourself with your own thoughts or whatever because it's it's useless at some point because i think that like the only thing that actually stops you it is you you know so like at the end of the day 
if you just um, have a positive mindset and you accept failures and you know that there's always growth beyond behind all of that, you're just a you know a positive human, like a uh, a very you know uh, well grown human being. I think that's how life needs to proceed for everybody. Hmm. So yeah, that that's my actual answer. Yeah. <laughs> I like it, man. I like it. What's been something that's like very challenging for you in the maybe last last year, for example, that has grown you a ton and that you've made an opportunity out of? Mm-hmm. Mm, um, <laughs> I'd say the latest um, relationship that I've had with a girl, which is my ex fiance. Um, I was really challenging because as an artist um, and as a, you know, all, uh, you know, I, I need to, you know, just do so much stuff all the day long. I need to have, you know, schematic processes going all around and all that stuff. Uh, you know, it was kind of challenging to me to put uh, a new, you know, uh, a new process, which was my this relationship in my labyrinth of life, you know, of public life and also private life too, of course. Um, but like in my actual life pattern, you know, including this new relationship was kind of tough. But I took it as a challenge that I actually failed, <laughs> to be honest. But um, I accepted that and I learned so much from it. I learned so much from it. Mm. Um, And also, beside that, um, collabing with an actual music producer, which was, at first place, Nails. That was really challenging. That was so much challenging, so much. Because I needed to get myself ready with a sample pack, a proper sample pack. I needed to get myself ready with, like, other people, other music producer supporters because I, otherwise I could have felt alone, you know? Like, I am not supported, like, from nobody at all. I am just a human being boxer. And I couldn't, you know, I couldn't accept that in the first place before, before like, you know, um, introducing me to him, you know? I couldn't accept that. So I needed to, like, surround me, surround myself with, like, people that I could trust. And I want to mention the boys, Ayonix, and Million Wong, um, uh, Subloaded. Um, I want to mention also Initiate, Initiate Music. So sick. Uh, my boy, Yax, of course, that helped me so much on this. Uh, mm-hmm. And also you, you pushed, like, you pushed me so much on doing that, actually. You and also Brian. Yeah, you too were so support like supporting me like so much. Um, also, I want to mention Theodora. I I also want to mention Theodora Hovrea, uh, which is like a uh, like the number one fan of Moroda X Mastodon. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we we're just you know obsessed with our you know music producers. My obsession is clearly Sudden Death, Danny Holland, aka Sudden Death. Fuck yes. Um, I love you so much. Um, yeah. Semen. <laughs> semen. Fuck yes. <laughs> Yo, I want to open a topic on, on the semen, by the way. Go for right it. After, uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> We're like, what the fuck right now? I'm like, Yo, anyone who has no clue what sudden death is about, it's just like, why did they just mention <laughs> semen? No, no, no. We'll get into it in a moment. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so the thing is that actually like Saturday I've had lost lands last year I was about to take like a picture with the whole crowd and he has like gently to say semen instead of cheese that typically like normal people does must say, you know? Like, oh my card of three, I'm gonna say semen. <laughs> was that the origin of it? Yes. <laughs> Everybody were like, okay, semen. But he didn't say semen. He was like, one, two, three, six, fuck. Because he even spelled the word, like, I don't know how. He was like, six, 
fuck? But the whole crowd screamed and I was like, see man, you know? <laughs> He's, oh he's definitely God. one of a kind, that guy. Like, yeah. listening to his 2018... I love him. I love him. I love him. I, love you. I discovered him um, through Bass Weight Records in uh, 2017. Also, Uber. Also, a uh, way minus. Uh, way minus. Uh, how can I say that name? Ominous. <laughs> Ominous, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. I, I thought he was all minus for the longest time, so don't worry. I, I am Italian, just accept that. <laughs> you know? And also I discovered like, um, yeah, just those people. Uh, also Alros and Yax, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say um, Yax 100% because I'm going to guess you're talking about Shut Him Down. Shut Him, yeah, the collab of uh, Sudden Death and Yax. Like, wow, literally one of the very first uh, pieces that I, music pieces that I heard from Danny. Um, yeah, but yeah, like now the human beatbox community just shout out like semen every fucking time that sees me for no absolute reason because I'm just repeating this like time by time. But they don't know about the actual story there is behind all of that, you know? And, I, mm-hmm. and yeah, like it feels like what the fuck did I? I'm so influencing, you know? I feel 100%. like an imp- I feel as uh, like like an influencer at some point. I don't know what the fuck. Well, you absolutely <laughs> are. You've what, how many thousands of uh, followers you have at this point? Like seventy k. Um. So 25? on on Instagram, I've got like uh seventy four dot seven k followers. On YouTube, I've got like thirty three thousand followers, and on TikTok, I've got like twenty four thousand followers. On Facebook, I used it to have like an overall amount of friends, like 5,000 or whatever. But I don't actually remember the, the number. But, plus, you hate Facebook, yeah. so. Plus, I do hate Facebook. So I don't even know why I do mention him right now. But <laughs> why? Why did that? That's. Uh... It's all good, bro. It's all good. Okay, so wait, sudden death for, for uh, a second before we leave that topic. Um, yeah. What was. The, okay, so. Where did you invent this like headbutt thing? And then why did you say semen after? That's not because of sudden death. That's because of Trump. Um, oh, right. Yeah. So you combine so let the me, two. Let me, let, me, let, me go, let me go this like more deeply. Absolutely. Um, so like, I got to admit that Trump uh, influenced me so much. So much. Like the latest couple of years, I've been influenced by Trump like so much. I um, but you know what? Like he's got like so much style. Like I'm talking about like physically and also making music. I love his music, by the way. You know, but like his style of you know moving behind the deck, of you know clothing and. The hair, by the way, the fucking. I was just gonna say the hair. I'm like, I can kind of see. I can see the similarities between you guys right now. (laughs) The fucking hair, by the way. (laughs) You know, (sighs) just yeah, (laughs) man. I I felt I felt so obsessed with him, like for the latest couple of years. I was like, yeah, my fucking. (laughs) I love you, Trumpa. So, um. But yeah, <laughs> I was like, okay, uh, I need to just, I need to just change my hairstyle. I need to make piercings, maybe. Nah, no, fuck piercings. I don't like them. Um, <laughs> make tattoos or whatever. Nah, I don't like neither tattoos. So fuck them. Just let's make those hair more stylish, you know. <sighs> it's like, dude, your hair is phenomenal. So no, like I, I just treat them the same way that he treats. So. Because I, I am when I when I do focus on something, I start being obsessed with it, you know? I think that <laughs> is a, one of your greatest assets in life. Yeah, kinda, yeah. Yeah. Well do you think yeah, there's a yes. drawback to it? Uh, you, you won't, sorry. Do you think there's a drawback to being obsessed? I think it's mostly good, but it also can have its consequences as well, right? No, um, if you cannot control obsession, it is kind of a problem, you know. <laughs> Fair. 
I was so obsessed with Trumpa, you know, like, holy shit. <laughs> and then, like, I started asking to, like, so many people, like, how do he treat his hair? I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> and, like, how... <laughs> And also, how do like, um, how do like which which um, uh, which shoes does you know wear and whatever? Or I was so obsessed with him, like for no absolute reason, like out of nowhere. But yeah, like, um, I started having this uh, like point of view of him, um. But not because of his, you know, addictions, because he is so addicted to alcohol and smoking and whatever. Uh, because I, when I am obsessed or focused on a specific thing, I can distinguish properly, like, positive and negative things, you know. Mm-hmm. And you um, don't drink or do anything. No, I am a, a teetotaler, which means that I don't drink anything at all, you know. And have you been like this forever, by the way? What did you say? I'm sorry. I've, it's okay. Have you been like this forever? Yeah, forever. Science day one. But mm. I actually tried like once beer. Um, oh no. But it felt like shit. I was like, Ugh. what? Okay, is felt that? or tasted both, maybe? Both. Both. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's a really, really bad taste until you like. I don't even know. It took me until, like fucking until, until until you like wine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, bro, wine. We're eventually going to have wine somehow, some way, somehow, somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no beer though. Literally took me like probably like a hundred beers to actually like it, and now it's just like no going back. But I so respect mm-hmm. that you are because you you barely even drink caffeine. Like you'll have like maybe like a, a an no, energy bro. drink here and there, but besides that. No. Um, sometimes I just um, drink Coca Cola or Red Bull. But yeah, like I you do. need Red Bull. Like you're already probably the most hyped fucking person I know. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, but most of the time, you know, I just drink him because of the taste of taurine. I'm like, oh, this is shit. It's tasty, you know. It is fucking tasty. I, I try to like avoid it if I can. But oh my god, this is the best taste. It is actually it is actually a little bit addicting to be honest. But at some point like I can control this, so okay, fuck that. Yeah, I get it. Um all right, dude. Uh let's talk quickly about not actually quickly, let's quickly go into or I said quickly again. Let's talk about human beatbox and merging it with EDM. Okay. Because we touched um, on this briefly, but th- this has been... When was this goal developed for you? When was it ideated? <clears throat> so the main point um, of all of that was, like, when I was... Um, like, the main idea came out when I was uh, refused by um, some specific listeners, you know? I was refused as a, an artist, as a, you know, as a musician from plenty of listeners that were like from 40, from being like from 40 years old um, until, I don't know, 60 or 70 years old either, you know? Um, if you know me, I'm a very sensitive person. <laughs> so like um, when I felt refused i felt it like in a way that it shouldn't feel you know like very bad like so much bad i could have just you know oh fuck that guy i i took every like every single word that those people say to me like weird noises weird fart noises or whatever you know uh, as a painful thing because I do really rely on this so much. I do really care about my uh, discipline, which is the human beat box. Mm-hmm. So I was like, hmm. so you're calling myself, you know, a fart noise maker. Hmm. So let's see what I can do. I started creating a TEDx talk. Um, in first place in Italy uh, was at Cesena, which is the current city which I'm living in, you know? 
Right after that, I made another one in Rome, which was way bigger. And another one back in Cesena, but in a school, you know, a TEDx in a school. So it was more specifically for young people. And I was like, this is not enough. I need to just, you know, touch a point where people can declare that human beatbox is actual music. So I was like, hmm, let's make a fusion of my testers and people's perspectives and what my goal is, which was in common the electronic music. And I was like, okay, so electronic music is basically electronic, like it is actual music. I know that I can reach that point of making just a collaboration with one of those artists and I'm going to do it. Whatever it happens, I'm going to do it. So I was there making to-do lists after to-do lists and all day long, you know? I was obsessed with that, with that idea specifically. And I was like, okay, once I'm going to get a collaboration, I'm going to demonstrate to other people that this is actual music relied on human beatbox, which makes 100% sense because human beatbox simultaneously is music in that perspective. So that's what I did. But you know what? People just keep talking. People just keep ignoring the fact that, and I've always avoided and puts like meat on their eyes. Like people are just, they feel like they just fake to be blind, you know, so most of the time. Like, no, this is, this is noise. This is just, which is, which, you know, it could be also a positive thing, but. In the way that they uh, pronounce it, it sounds so negative. Like, this is stupid noise. Like, noise is actually beautiful. Noise is actually brilliant. Noise is actually, you know, revolutionary and it's part of the future of the music. Why noise has to bring a negative concept? Noise is actually evolution. That's what actually people don't understand about music, about evolving, about, you know, they, they just pretend to be right in every single moment, you know? Oh, so you're just an artist that makes weird stuff, noises with his mouth, oh, just about boots and cats and boots and cats. <laughs> They're just not about boots and neither about cats, dude. This, this is just, you know, about fundamentals. This is about art. This is about music. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna reach a point where people are gonna be convinced enough that this is, that this is actual music. But the thing is, I'm not pursuing my life as an artist because I want to please other people. <laughs> this is stupid. But I need to be honest with you. It is a thing that actually pushes me so much forward. Really, so much. This is like your main North Star. Mm -hmm. Because I'm actually obsessed with society, to be honest. I'm obsessed with like people. I'm, I love psychology so much. Um, so like, uh, and plus I am sensitive as fuck and you know that. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, also, sorry. Mm, just to finish this topic, um, I plan to make a TEDx about rhythm, full in English, because music producers that are not involved into electronic music are ignorant enough to define rhythm or even dubstep noise music in a negative way which ah, makes me upset so much so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make a tedx exclusively relied on rhythm in english language because every tedx talk that i made was in italian so yeah and uh, they were like just related on human beatbox specifically so mm -hmm. that's the thing 
Mm. Let's also talk real quick about viewing yourself as an artist over, over a beatboxer. Cause that moment happened earlier this year. Hmm. Hmm. Oh yes. Oh, wow. Wow. I do remember a specific moment. It happened like a while ago. I want to mention Moroda, by the way. Um, like, uh, there's, I want to declare in first place that being an artist or a beatboxer is pretty much the same thing, to be honest. But there are some specific moments in your life that you recognize more yourself as an artist more than ever, you know? Than actually just a beatboxer, you know? Because, like, it happened that, like, um, a couple of years ago, I was uh, listening to an old remix uh, from Audio Records. That was about a track called, um, I don't remember the track. I'm so bad at remembering. It's okay. We'll, we'll, throw it in, we'll throw it in the description. Yeah. Um, the remix was by Fluid Zen. I, yeah, Fluid Zen, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, I remember that, like, um, I, I heard this track like two or three years ago, you know, and the thing that happened a while ago, and I'm talking about just three or four months ago, it never happened neither once in my life. I remembered the actual pattern of it, every single sequence of the track, once I woke up a morning, you know? I was like, why do I am thinking of this? Like, ah, I've got, like, I do remember that remix, like, entirely, like, in every single, like, you know, precise moment. And I'm like, no, 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 this is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, this is so weird and i i remember like the actual track id i was there uh listening to it and then i saw a moroda comment like if the if this like at least two thousand uh plays uh needs to be mine and i was like i was like oh oh my god i need to write him right now I wrote him, I explained him like the whole thing. And in that specific moment, it was like a big momentum of mine. I felt like a artist, you know, because I could recognize that, that patterns and that, like every single specific moment of that track, like, wow, it never happened. It just happened once in my entire life. I was like, wow. And the thing of comparison, like I compared myself with Moroda because we had a convo about with me and Hamish, because it's his real name, Hamish Prasad. We got to him, by the way. Um, like, you know, we had this convo and it was like, yeah, it happened quite like, it happened quite the same thing to me, actually. Um, I, I was like, holy shit, like this, this feels weird. And by answering your question, like, you know, there are some specific moments that I feel more as an artist and in those specific cases, as I already mentioned before, and more as a beatboxer, but as beatboxer, but they're just pretty much the same thing because being a beatboxer, it automatically means that you're an artist by itself, you know, because you just make art, you just make music, you're, you're an artist. You just create, you just emulate sounds. You just, you just be you, you know? Um, yeah. I think that's a good way of actually just summing it all up. Being an artist and being you and expressing yeah. authentically what's coming, what's coming to you. Correct. Man, I have a million other topics I would love to get into, but I think we're going to have to do a round two because we just have, we just have so many other things to, to talk of about. Okay. Bro, thank you so much for coming on the show. I am I love this. so I love this. I love you, bro. Like I love this you is, so much. <laughs> I'm so grateful to have known you. Um wow. And also shout out bro, to I'm grateful for to it. know you as well. You're such a beautiful person, bro. Thank so you. Much. 
you as well. You're an incredible soul. And I want to get more into that in the next episode as well, where we talk more about psychology. We'll talk about hacking, life hacking, and all the things that go on in your day-to-day processes. I want to get into all of that stuff. But I feel like this is a a good wrap of a (laughs) ton of music topics within this. So anyways, thank you so much for being on, bro. I love you. Thank you for having me, bro. Really. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And I'm so glad that we actually made this happen because again, it's been like it's six, seven months in the in the making. So I'm yeah. so pleased to be your one of your one of your closest friends. And uh bro, for until real. next time, yes. bro. Until next time. Yeah, let's go. Love right. you, bro. Love you too. All right. Appreciate you guys watching and listening. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you would like to me to cover in part two, potentially. And I will definitely consider that on the outline as well as please like comments and subscribe. Every little bit of those helps the channel so much. The more it helps the channel grow, the better guests I can get as time goes on. It's a, it's a win-win for everyone. Would love as well. If you're into self growth, Press that subscribe button. I have so much stuff coming down the road and I am here to serve you in your self growth journey to help you be accountable, to help you level up as we grow together. So hit that subscribe button. As always, my name is Josh Moxie. I hope this brought you a ton of value and I will catch you in the next episode.